So this is a gentleman who has a history of coronary disease. He had a, a complex uh, LED diagonal stenting and RCA stenting about two years ago and presents now with recurrent angina, which has been refractory to medical therapy. We found a disease of a tortuous circ marginal, which is, which is moderate to large in size. And we're going to attempt a PCI for symptom relief. So the catheter we're going to choose to do this is a universal catheter, the Akari uh, catheter. We're going to choose the four shape, which is the largest shape. And the reason for that is because he's a large man with what appeared to be a, a, a healthy size aorta by the angiograms. Um, and this will enable us to get adequate backup. The, the backup that we seek to obtain with this catheter is placing the catheter into the ostium and then having the proximal curve up against the opposite side of the aorta to provide maximum uh, power position or maximum, um, maximum backup. And that's what we'll do first. The, uh, the Kari catheter has a good shape that can be used for LAD and circumflex angioplasty. It can also be used to do right coronary angioplasty and many times I'll use this in the cases of a, um, an acute anterior wall MI where I want to take a picture of the right side first and then, do, and then begin immediately on the angioplasty of the left. It saves a lot of time. It's one catheter. It's universal. It easily engages the right coronary artery by straightening it out with a wire and then it provides excellent backup support for the LED, so I'll, I'll often use it as a diagnostic catheter for the opposite vessel in the setting of an acute MI, or to do an angioplasty of both vessels. So in this case, we advance it just like a diagnostic catheter into the left coronary cusp, and then we just advance and counter torque like, a count like we do with a diagnostic universal catheter, and then engage the coronary. There you go. Remove the wire. And you can see that we're engaged. We'll document that with some angiograms. A little touch. So you see we're engaged in the artery. But what we want to do is we want to have that, we want to have that parallel to the vessel. And also, by pulling back on the catheter, we can slide that more proximal bend up, straighten out the tip of the catheter, and this will give us a more powerful uh, backup. Touch that. And as you can see, when we when we pulled back on the catheter, the tip of the catheter slid in uh, into a more uh, uh, advanced position inside the left main. The catheter tips are very soft, they're very atraumatic, um, and therefore the risk of dissection from this catheter is very low. The dimple surface is more of a benefit in the radial artery, in a smaller radial artery. It uh, creates less friction and therefore we have less trouble exchanging catheters or advancing this catheter into position. Especially in the acute setting when uh, the patient is you know, clamped down with catecholamines and in the setting of an acute MI, uh, this catheter um, is really beneficial. It's beneficial from not only an access standpoint but also a dual purpose once you get into the coronaries to do either imaging or angioplasty with the same catheter. So we're in the vessel. And we got, and this is a run through hypercoat. This wire is also a game changer when it comes to torches and tight vessels. As you can see, it can find its way pretty much anywhere. So we have a run through hypercoat down the vessel. <clears throat> We're going to put the Takara balloon. The reason we chose a Takara here is for the tortuosity of the vessel and also the critical nature of the lesion. The distal lesion looks like it's calcified and and 95%, so we have to circumnavigate some tortuosity as well as some disease. So we need good, got, we need good catheter backup. Okay, so the Takira balloon gets right to the lesion at 1.5 to 1.5 millimeter. Going up. We get the 1.5 millimeter care to the, past the tortuosity and cross the tight lesion. Now we're gonna bring back the 2.5. After dilating the obtuse marginal lesion with the 2.5 balloon, we were unable to pass a stent and therefore made the decision to place a guideline or guide extender 
We did this over the Takira balloon, using it as a rail, and we're able to place the guide liner right to the lesion. We were then able to deploy the stent without difficulty. At this point, we have successfully completed intervention of the obtuse marginal branch, and we'll now turn our attention to the proximal left circumflex bifurcation. We will pursue provisional stenting by wiring both branches and stenting preferentially into the main branch, which is the proximal circumflex into the obtuse marginal. Proximal optimization technique will be performed with a non-compliant balloon to the proximal portion of the stent. An angiogram will be performed to assess the side branch. This demonstrates a critical stenosis of the side branch. Therefore, the side branch will be rewired through the stent and a final kissing balloon angioplasty will be performed and a final angiogram demonstrates an excellent result at the proximal circumflex bifurcation. Applying the updated sky guidelines for same day discharge, we can look at the three P's mentioned in this document, and they are patient, and that is that the patient is stable with baseline mental status and stable comorbidities. The procedure, despite the procedure being very complex, it was successful and the access was radial, therefore low bleeding risk. And we apply the program, the program looks at the patient and determines whether or not he's stable at home with another adult in the house and he is able to receive guideline directed medical therapy expeditiously. This patient fits all criteria and will be discharged in four to six hours post-procedure.